to feature the top video content in the For You tab. And Apple will be making similar adjustments within the music application. Actually, from their press release earlier today, it says that they'll be heavily featuring music videos in the For You tab or the video section of Apple Music. So get ready to see a lot more video content within your music application. And users are reporting that AirPlay multi-room support or AirPlay 2 support has been added in 11.3 and is working already. So as you can see, multi-room support here is working. And within iOS 11.3, Apple has added support for advanced mobile location. So when you call 911, your location data will automatically be shared with the responder. So that way they save that precious time where they're asking you what's going on. And sometimes you can't even respond. So that's been enabled in here. And I'm sure you'll be able to disable it if you really want to. And AR kit has been updated to 1.5 in 11.3. And that means it now has support for vertical surfaces like walls, irregular shaped surfaces like circular tables, support for autofocus, and 50% higher resolution. So all around some great improvements to the AR. capabilities. And the feedback app returns, so like in every beta, we see a new application, you'll be able to submit bug reports here to Apple. And for the iPad, users are reporting that lag when entering the control center has been improved in this version, so it's been made much more responsive, quicker, and the lag has been reduced. And a few new features that were discovered by developers, so not something you'll be able to see by yourself, but iOS 11.3 has the ability to hide iOS updates from supervised devices for up to 90 days. And Safari in iOS 11.3 has the ability to save GIFs as MP4 or silent videos and thus reducing the size of that file and you're able to use password autofill within the web view of applications so both of the password of the application you're using can be shared with a web view inside of it and when saving a website to your home screen the shortcut is now capable of accessing your camera according to this developer and for those that want to download iOS 11.3 developer beta today I can show you how to do that real quick so I'll leave a link down below in the description you just click on it and it'll take you here so go ahead and click download and you will download the developer profile. So reboot your device after this and you will see iOS 11.3 available in your over-the-air update settings. So that's how to install it. Now I wanted to talk about performance. So on my iPhone 10, really couldn't say I noticed a difference, but let's check the Geekbench. So compared to iOS 11.2.5, I'm going to run this real quick. And here's that score on iOS 11.3. Can't say there's anything spectacular about it. Pretty average, very similar to 11.2.2 here. And uh, overall, the usability of it can't say that there's anything different either on my iPhone 10. If you have an older device and you've updated let me know earlier today before the release they actually released several new and emojis for the iphone 10 so if i scroll up here you'll be able to see that there are four new ones a lion there's a dragon a skull and a teddy bear so pretty cool that apple is expanding to this adding new ones apple's fascination with emojis in general is quite interesting so many users with older iphones that were affected by the cpu throttling such as the iphone 6 6s or even iphone 7 are reporting that in ios 11.3 that throttling has been disabled so without a switch present, there's no switch in settings or anything like that, Apple automatically disabled it. And where iPhone 6 users were getting about 900 megahertz single core score, they're now getting 1400, basically what it should be at. So it's unknown when Apple will add that switch in, but it will be in a later version of iOS 11.3 to disable and re-enable the throttling if you'd like it. But currently it's been disabled. And as a result, a lot of people are having much faster iPhones, probably with a little bit shorter battery life. There's a new business chat feature that Apple actually talked about before the release of iOS 11 that's finally getting implemented in iOS 11.3, where you'll be able to talk with some of the major retailers within your messages application if you need their help. And from the get-go, Discover, Hilton, Lowe's, and Wells Fargo will be available using this feature. And Apple actually mentioned that the new battery settings for throttling, which are not present, will be available here in the battery section. So there will be more monitoring options here, and you'll be able to disable and re-enable that throttling within the battery settings. And here's an interesting one. So on the iPhone 10, there's a couple changes to the way the app switcher works. So first off, note notice this, when I swipe up, the card appears first. I wouldn't say it's faster to activate, it's exactly the same, but the card itself appears a little bit faster. So watch that, it just appears right there. It's a little bit more intuitive, I guess. Also, the haptic feedback is almost instant on the iPhone 10 on 11.3, whereas here it's about twice as fast. You have to wait like a second delay until you feel it. So a little interesting change there. And look at that, is that a new icon? Nope, iBooks has just been renamed to Books. There's no longer an I in front of it. Also, I noticed a small change inside, so when 
I'm actually jumping in. There's no longer all books. It's just called library up top now. So that's been removed. I can't see samples in there either. Also on the top right over here, the select button has been replaced by edit. So also a small one. And when you open up messages for the very first time, you will see this prompt here. So messages on iCloud. There's a new splash screen. And yes, this feature is now enabled. Within iCloud settings, you're gonna be able to get a toggle in order to activate iMessages over iCloud. So something Apple actually had in earlier versions of iOS 11 and then removed and now finally bringing it back. So you'll find that option here in iCloud and by default it is disabled. So you have to enable it manually. And an awesome change that Apple brought back in iOS 11 within the update section of the App Store, you'll now be able to see more details on updates such as the version number and the size of the update. This is something Apple regularly does show you but within the app settings themselves or the app details, now they're available in the update page. Now, I really don't know why Apple would remove this but they actually got rid of the little Bluetooth indicator in the now playing music widget in the control center. As you can see that little one right there that just ebbs blue, it's gone. Like you can't see it at all anymore. So you don't know when you have Bluetooth connected right away, but they did replace it with something else. So I noticed when you actually open up a pair of AirPods or start playing music, you will see a little icon in the top right that says that it's playing over the headphones. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to these. Look at the top right here you'll see that music icon or the headphones icon in the top right and it fades away. Kind of cool little subtle animation. Definitely is not there on 11.2.5. I also noticed a couple of things over here. So in the spotlight search, when you actually click on search, you're gonna get a different animation now on 11.3. So things are a little bit different. So it slides down from the top. So we'll just watch this one, two, three. The animation is different, certainly has been changed up. It kind of slides down from the very top of the screen, not from the search. Over 35 that I could see features changes, small things here and there, and how to install it at the very end. So we're gonna be talking about that, the preview in general, everything that this firmware is about, and uh, if you guys wanna install it at the end, let's get to it. All right, so I'm gonna start by showing you the version numbers. On the right, I'm gonna be showing iOS 11.2.5 for comparison on the left, 11.3. So first thing I wanted to start off with is in the setup menu, the first time you use it, you're gonna see this interface right here, the privacy settings. So now there's a change. Whenever the privacy settings are being used in the status bar, you will see this icon here. It's two people shaking hands. Basically, when any of your personal data or information is gonna be shared, you're gonna see the icon in the status bar. Not so much a feature, but a change and one that I didn't like. This is a considerably large update. So before updating on a 64 gigabyte device, I had 55 gigabytes after only 52. So it took up three gigabytes to install this. Just for your consideration, if you guys want to install it, it will take up quite some storage. So one of the things Apple previewed 